Hi guys! Uh, welcome to another post on Saturday Night Stitch. My name is Hila and I'd like to extend a warm welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, so today's post is to talk about some of my magazine tracing woes. So as some of you know, if you've already been following this channel for quite a while, is that I subscribe to Nip Mode Magazine as well as Birda Magazine. I started off with Birda Magazine and then I discovered Nip Mode. And I stuff, I ordered um, a subscription and I like the styles. I love how funky and fresh they are. However, one of the biggest challenges that I have is with tracing the patterns. Now, I consider myself an expert tracer. It can take me anywhere between 15 to 20 minutes to trace one pattern from Berda, which is where I first started tracing uh, sewing, pattern mag sewing magazine patterns. However, there's a big difference between Berda style and knit mode in terms of their pattern sheets. And I'm just going to show you what the problem I have is. So first of all, Berda, I'm going to start with Berda because Berda was the OG for me. It's the one that I started off with. Okay, this is a sample pattern sheet from Berda. Okay, I'm going to pop that over there. And as you can see, we've got green, we've got blue, and we have red. Um, so you've got the different colors. And I can see those colors quite easily to the extent where with time tracing with Berda has only gotten easier. So the first time I had to do a lot of squinting, but by the second time I was getting the hang of it and third and fourth time. And, you know, one of the main problems that I have with Berda is that I don't have enough time to sew the patterns that I trace out. Tracing is not a problem at all for me. So that's with Berda and that works really well for me. Now with Nip Mode, I thought it's a European sewing pattern. Berda is a European sewing pattern, so they're going to be just the same. But it turns out that they aren't the same. My biggest problem with Nip Mode is in tracing the patterns. Whenever I've traced a pattern from Nip Mode, even if it was just a simple pattern, it has taken me something like 30 to 40 minutes to trace a simple pattern. And by the end of it, I feel really tired, like brain tired, like eyes tired. And that's because the pattern sheets are just black and red. And my eyes cannot handle that. <laughs> So every time I see something that I really like in nip mode, and I'm like, I want to do that one. So, and then I open that up, like my activation energy, my motivation energy, it just goes down, completely down. And that's been a problem for me. So much so that it's been the reason why I've been reconsidering whether I should keep the subscription or not. I'm coming up to a subscription renewal in another four months. And because of the, you know, if I have to choose when I've got a limited amount of time, because there's opportunity cost, isn't there? If I have to choose between, am I going to go trace from nip mode or am I going to go trace from burger? I naturally would tend to go for the burger because it's easier for me to trace. However, Recently, somebody mentioned um, on one of my Christmas Vlogmas videos where I was sharing my woes of uh, not being able to sew with nib mode as much as I would like to because of the tracing issues. And they mentioned erasable highlighters. And I was like, what now? What, what, what is that? I know about the Frickson erasable pens. They are an indispensable part of my sewing cave tool set, but I never heard of erasable highlighters. And even though some people had suggested that I could just highlight the pattern that I want, I personally would never desecrate a pattern sheet by highlighting it because if anybody else were to take over this magazine or if I were to hand this over to somebody else, I don't think it would be particularly nice to have to use a pattern sheet that's already been written all over. So for me, it's something that I would never do and it's something that I wouldn't um, advise anybody to do either. 
But then if the highlighter is erasable, I was like, whoa, that changes things. Uh, so anyway, as quickly as I could, I ordered some of these Fritzen highlighters. And I am hoping that this is going to be a game changer for me when it comes to sewing with knit mode. So I got um, three of these highlighters and they're not even that expensive at all. It was less than five pounds for the three of them. And it's also the same brand, Pilot Friction. So I've got the ballpoint ones, which I use for marking fabric. So I'm excited about trying these out and I'm gonna report back to you how this goes. I have tried them out on just normal, ordinary paper and I used the hairdryer and the lines just disappeared, just like that. So could this be the tool that finally brings knit mode in full circle into my sewing life only time is going to tell and i'd like to thank everybody who suggested these because these are a tool that i did not even know existed and it never even occurred to me that there might be highlighters that are erasable so thank you so much for that and now just for the sake of completion i'm just going to show you a quick demo of how i checked these pens uh, so first of all they do have a good contrast value so you can clearly see them and they're designed with an inbuilt eraser and it's this little bit of hard silicon or some hard plasticky type material and generally you're supposed to press down hard on whatever material you've written on and you sort of uh, create the friction which creates the heat which gets rid of the ink and you can see there um, something else that I'd written obviously isn't going to be erasable. So that was good. But then I'm not going to be using the back of the pen to erase all those long lines of sewing patterns, right? So I thought I'd check with the hairdryer. And this is my hairdryer on a low setting. And it really wasn't doing much in terms of getting the lines to disappear. And of course, there's also the challenge that I'm trying to do this one handed whilst also recording it for this video. <laughs> um, but it wasn't working. So what I then found that I had to do was to actually increase the temperature. So my hairdryer only has two settings. Uh, actually, it's got three off one and then two and no matter how close i was placing it to the paper on the lower setting which is the one it just wasn't doing that much and then by this point i'd increased it to the higher setting and i found that i had to bring it right up to the paper right up to the paper close to a hair's breadth away and that sort of got most of the eraser out and for me this is good enough i can always go over those bits that are left over so that's my demo i hope that you found this video interesting entertaining helpful and if you did do give it a big thumbs up down below if you haven't already do subscribe i put out sewing related videos every single week until i see you next time happy sewing bye